Hey guys, guess what? I'm British now, apparently. Pip Pip Cheerio, God Save the Queen, Tea and Crumpets, Henry VIII. See, my story checks out, you can't dispute it. All right, more importantly, do you guys know what this flag is referred to? That's right, it's a Union Jack, just like Jack from One Piece. Today's video is going to be about the Beast Pirates and their hierarchy. Yep, I flew 1,000 miles, went to Epcot Center, and spent a bunch of money on all this British crap just so I could make that reference and this intro. I'm very committed to my craft. Okay, so right now the Straw Hat Pirates are squaring off against the Beast Pirates led by Kaido, one of the four emperors of the sea himself, and their battlefield will be the country of Wano. Now, of course, we've had some other uh, groups in Wano as well. Very hot in that thing. Um, we have the uh, Shogun, of course, that's leading his army of samurai, the Shogun uh, uh, Orochi. You also have uh, the Kozuki clan that's still around in the shadows, and they have allies as well. So it's not just the Beast Pirates that are getting involved here, um, but they are going to be a central figure. Whereas Luffy went to Totland not only to take back Sanji, but also to kind of challenge Big Mom. And, you know, he did, and, and in a sense didn't actually defeat Big Mom, but also defeated her kind of like morally in the sense of like we managed to get in and then escape your territory um luffy is definitely kind of out for dethroning kaido i think luffy has that like blood boiling right now where he's like i need to take out a yonko right and he made that declaration to big mom he said you know right after we're done here saving sanji we're gonna go over to wano and i'm gonna beat the crap out of kaido i'm gonna take him down and big mom was like mama 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 you can oh that's why her laughter style, she's big mom and her laughter style is mama. Okay, I I know, it's hard to get over. It, 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 Oda, you clever bastard. Okay, but uh, anyway, yeah, big mom was like, oh, Kaido, mama, 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 you can't defeat that thing. It's He's too strong. He's a freak. He's a monster. Um, so I think because maybe she said that to Luffy, I think Luffy really just, I'm going to show her. I'm going to take him down. Now, Luffy's going to need some help there, but let's take a look at Kaido's crew to see really what his uh, his assets are, so to speak. So Kaido is, of course, the captain, um, and we don't really get to see him in action all too much. Uh, every time he's in a major confrontation, it's usually by accident. Like he was trying, he jumped off the Sky Island and crashed down in the place that just happened to be where Hawkins and Kid and Apu were having their meeting, and so he attacked them. But I don't know. Kaido so far hasn't really seemed like the kind of guy that, like, you know, I'm gonna go handle this situation myself because he seems like he has a lot of heavy hitters on his crew. Now, directly under Kaido, we have the three calamities. We've only seen one of them so far. They're named after natural disasters. The one we've seen so far is Jack, the drought. And Jack had the power of the ancient zone uh, elephant elephant fruit, so he could become a mammoth. Now, this is uh, hearsay and just, like, my theory here, but I'm going to assume that all of the calamities have the power of either an ancient zone or a mythical zone. The zones are the thing with Kaido's crew. That's their aesthetic. That's their focus, because they have the smoke. Miles, the artificial created devil fruits and all of these artificial created devil fruits for whatever reason there's none of them that are logia or paramecia they are all zones maybe that's because they're the easiest ones to manufacture or another popular theory is that they're actually taking like the spirits of animals and turning them into fruits maybe they're the only ones that could be manufactured but whatever the reason why they're all zones um, the, the title of Kaido is Kaido of the beasts so mostly everybody in his crew is probably going to have the power of a zone fruit and we've already seen this with the other groups like the gifters that all have you know, like fragments of their body like that one guy had a lobster claw we've seen mouse man we've seen batman we've seen gazelle man so that's the thing we're going with here but when you get up to the calamities you'd figure there have to be like something else to kind of give them that extra you know combat boost you know something to make them interesting so jack had an ancient zone where it wasn't a smile, it wasn't artificial, it was just a normal devil fruit, one of the very rare kinds. So I'm thinking maybe every time they come across a really rare fruit like that, that's like one of the heavier hitters of the crew gets it. All the underlings and the, the scrubs, they get the artificial ones that can come off an assembly line. But whenever they get something really valuable, that's, you know, they give it to a calamity or a headliner or somebody of that, you know, line. So Jack was known as the drought because he could turn into a woolly mammoth and he could like stomp out the entire terrain and so make it 
it like nothing could grow there anymore, and that's why he was referred to as a drought. We don't know who the other calamities are yet, and we don't really even know if... We know Jack is still alive, he's underwater, but we don't know if he'll ever make an appearance in Wano, if he'll be rescued at some point. I'm assuming he would be. I don't think Oda would just, you know, go through the trouble of showing him like that. Like, oh yeah, he's alive under the ocean unless he was going to do something with him later, so I'm thinking Jack might get rescued by another calamity and then get brought back to Wano, maybe. We'll see where that goes. But as for the other calamities, well, things that I can think of are wildfires, maybe a tornado or a hurricane, uh, a tsunami. I think a tsunami would be a good one, especially if we're going like, you know, land, that would be Jack, the drought, you know, devastating the land, and then the sea, maybe a tidal wave or something that could, you know, you know, destruction from the sea, and then the air, maybe a tornado or a hurricane. Maybe that's the way Oda's going to go with it. And in that regard, we could maybe have, if they're all going to be ancient zones, I can think of a lot of cool stuff you could do with that. Like, um, you know, the air, like I, I'm, uh, I don't know, the, uh, the, the, the tornado and I have the power of the ancient zone pterodon. It, like you could think of some really cool stuff there, either that or, or mythical. But, um, Hey, if you just want to keep the aesthetic of the ancient zones, uh, we've only seen like two of those so far. We've seen X Drake, who's also coincidentally part of Kaido's crew. And, uh, we've also seen Jack. So if you want to add some more ancient zones to this, to this mix, I would be fine with that. But then moving on to the other sections of Kaido's crew, I already mentioned the gifters. We also have the pleasures. The pleasures, I originally assumed, were just the part of the crew that hangs out in Kaido's weird sex dungeon, but no, these apparently are just, like, the ones that are maybe a little bit more sadistic, and from what we've seen so far, the pleasures don't actually have the power of even the artificial zones yet. They're just basically, like, ordinary, really sadistic pirates, so maybe they're, like, the new recruits or something like that, like, until you can prove yourself worthy to, you know, because even though they're, they're smiles and everything, they come off an assembly line, there's not an infinite supply of them. You can't just give them out to every single person in the crew. And with the destruction of the factory on Dressrosa, there's no more smiles, you know, being created. So they would have to be a little bit more careful with the ones they already had. But then we have the gifters, and the gifters are the ones that do have artificial powers. We've seen, you know, Gazelle Man and Batman and everything. Um, and it, it's something that we see with the differences between regular zones compared to artificial zones, where these guys, um, a lot of times we see like one part of their body, like with sheep's. Uh, uh, sheep's head he could turn his fist into like a horn and then punch people with it but we didn't actually see him turn into a, a full sheep maybe he could maybe he couldn't we don't know um the thing that's odd is because we've never seen a zone be able to do that kind of stuff before like for instance um uh, Dalton, he had the power of a, of a bison zone, right? But Dalton didn't turn, like, his fist into a bison horn and then, like, stab his opponent with that. Like, he could turn into, like, the standard three different stages, you know? So, it's probably some benefits, but also some drawbacks from these artificial zones in some way, in some form. But we're not really here to talk about that. We're really here just to talk about the hierarchy. So, so far, I'm going to say the pleasures are on the bottom, and then you have the gifters, and then we have a new group that was introduced just during this arc. We didn't even know about them beforehand, and that was the headliners. So, so far we know that there's three headliners, possibly more than that, because I like to think that if we're going to go with, like, the hierarchy, it goes headliners, and then the calamities, and then Kaido. Each of the calamities might be in charge of three headliners, and then those three headliners can, you know, have a battalion of gifters and pleasures to do with as they choose. So maybe when he was talking about, like, oh, yeah, we only have, like, three headliners right here in Wano, maybe they were referring to the fact that there's a calamity that controls those three. Perhaps when uh, Jack invaded Zoe, maybe Sheep's Head and Gene Rummy, maybe those were his headliners that could control the gifters and pleasures, because it did seem like Sheep's Head and Gene Rummy, they had some authority all the over the other members of the Beast Pirates while they were on Zoe. You know what I mean? and whenever, you know, they messed up and they had to go report back to uh, Jack that they couldn't uh, find Rizo in, at Zo, uh, who got punished for that? Sheep's Head got punished for that. So I could see that going down. Like, you know, Sheep's Head is the headliner. He goes, reports back to his superior, who was Jack, a calamity, and then he's like, I'm sorry, sir, we, the ninja's not there. We looked all over, we couldn't find him. I guess he must not be there, really, after all. And then Jack punished him, 
you know, hang him up, up sideways and used him as a punching bag, basically. Now, if we're going to go along with that line of thinking, we still don't know the calamity that's the superior of the three headliners right now, but we do know the names of the three headliners, and we've only seen two so far. You following me on this? It's actually not that complicated, really, because Kaido seems like the kind of guy that doesn't pay too much attention to, like, his crew or, like, the different, like, paperwork and the hierarchy and stuff. You know, Kaido's just this big muscle head, really. Who knows? Maybe he's a world scholar. We, we don't know. But with Big Mom, I mean, she had an entire family and all these islands and stuff. Maybe a little bit more harder to follow. But with Kaido, like... I've said it before, all the members of the of the gifters that have these artificial zone powers, they are given the most obvious names ever, so not a lot of creativity here. But as for the three headliners we know right now, well, one of them we know really well, and that's Basil Hawkins, who was a member of the Worst Generation. Uh, really no introduction there. He was one of the supernovas that was at Sabaody. We know a lot about Hawkins. I made a whole video about Hawkins, so yeah, he's one of the headliners. Then we have Hold'em who was the uh, beneficiary of the lion artificial zone. And like I said, it's a little weird because he has a lion head sticking out of his body rather than like becoming a lion himself. He has a lion head sticking out of his tum tum. And uh, it's, it's useful in certain regards. Other times it seems to be getting on his nerves, but this is Hold'em. Uh, I don't think Hold'em's going to be around for much longer because Luffy's confronting him right now in the manga. I, I think Hold'em's, I think in the next fight, Luffy's going to knock the shit out of Hold'em and then we're probably not going to see him again after for this but um this is Hold'em and the last one is Speed and we do not know who Speed was we just heard his name so I'm going to assume maybe he has the power of a cheetah artificial zone or I don't know an ostrich ostriches can run pretty fast so yeah maybe something like that but uh, we don't know anything about Speed now if we're going along with that logic let's say there's one calamity that's ruling over all of them and keep in mind Wano is a really big country and right now they're only in like one section of it granted they're hanging around the, the capital of Wano in the Curry region but there's a few other regions of the place so it's entirely likely that Kaido might have broken up the country of Wano under the control of the three calamities and Kaido K Kaido doesn't seem like the kind of guy also that's really you know like sitting up there dealing with the day-to-day -day activities of, of trying to take over a country uh, you have the Shogun, who's the acting ruler of the Wano country, but he's working in tandem with Kaido. And I'm sure for Kaido's own interest, he would make sure that part of his crew is represented all throughout the island. Okay, because you have to make sure that at least, like, the Shogun and Kaido, they don't turn on each other at one point, or the balance of power is shifted, like, all right, Shogun, I'm gonna take all of my crew on this one end of the island, and I'm not even gonna touch that end of the island. Ah, that doesn't seem like a smart move on Kaido's part. You'd think that he would want to have, you know, his men all over, you know, in case the Shogun decided to do something like double-cross him. You always, they're, they're pirates, guys. You always have to be careful that you might get double-crossed or triple-crossed or even the, the fearful quadruple-cross. You don't want to get quadruple-crossed, okay? But, yeah, so let's say that, like, all three of the Calamities had, like, a section of the island that they were under direct control over, and, you know, Kaido is there too, but he doesn't really care about the day-to-day -day operations. You could go to him with a grievance or something, but it's, like, most of the time, don't even really bother him, because Kaido's the kind of guy that's just, like, chilling out and drinking his booze and stuff like that, and he's a angry drunk, like, 90% of the time, and a depressed drunk the other 10, so it's just like, you know, okay, when we need you, you know, you, if somebody's really causing that much of a problem maybe he'll take action like when Luffy starts beating the crap out of the headliners and maybe a calamity or two maybe that's when Kaido will come out and be like what the hell is this shit you know so right now with Jack uh, he had to leave to go and try to find Raizo because all of the beast pirates they were holed up at Wano and then they probably found out about Rizo in the connection to Zoe, and maybe that's where the road poneglyph was. So I could see Jack, you know, he was hanging out in Wano, but then Kaido was like, Jack, go and find that damn ninja, glug, glug, glug. And then Jack was like, all right, Captain, I'll go. And then he took his headliners, which would let's just say it's Sheep Shed and Gene Rummy. Maybe there's another one we didn't see, or maybe there's only two. Maybe not all the Calamities have three under their employ. Maybe it's a certain number. So then he sets out to sea for Zoe. He gets completely decimated by a thousand-year-old elephant, and now Jack is just kind of waiting in the bottom of the ocean. He's apparently part fishman, so he can breathe, but he can't move because he's a devil fruit user. So let's just, let's just throw Jack out for the moment. Let's say he's not coming back. He might! He might, right? Right now in the arc, 
Um, if he doesn't come back in this arc, he might come back in another arc. How crazy would it be for Luffy to defeat the Beast Pirates with the help of his crew and with the help of uh, the other supernovas like Kid and Apu, Hawkins, they, and Law? They all rally together to take out Kaido, and then Wano gets freed, and then after that, like weeks or maybe months later, somebody fishes Jack out of the sea, and he finds out his entire crew has been decimated, and then he vows revenge on the Straw Hats or something. Now, going back to talking about the headliners here, and, and by the way, headliner, like the word itself, it just means like the star attraction, if you didn't know. Like, if you go to a concert, you have the opening act, but then you have the headliner who's like the main attraction, so I could see that in the application here on the crew. Like, you send the gifters and the pleasures to warm up the enemy, and then the headliner appears as sort of like the boss monster. Okay. So, uh, X-Drake, he was actually part of the Beast Pirates for longer than Hawkins and the others. And it's interesting because Hawkins is already a headliner, and he hasn't been part of the crew for very long. Um, Drake is also a headliner. It was mentioned he was the one that thrashed uh, the Amagasa village, the place Tama and Tengu are from, and that happened a while ago. And right before the time skip, we saw Drake and his pirate crew arrive in the New World. Apparently, the very first island they went to was a winter island that was under control of Kaido, and Scotch was there, that cyborg dude, and was like, if you make trouble here, boy, you know, uh, Kaido's gonna come down on you with a raining fire of vengeance and drake is like oh that works great for me i'm here to you know i'm, I'm here to apply for a job dino mode activate um and then he attacks scotch and i could dude that works so well because drake is already an ancient zone and kaido's crew the beast pirates is all about zones and all about like like um you know jack is already an ancient zone so i could see kaido arriving and been like are you the one that beat the crap out of this cyborg yeah go get him Sh shut up scotch i'm talking to the new recruit here you think you could be part of my crew and x drake is like i'm here to try to be it was like well actually you're a dinosaur you you're already invited you're in come on i mean we have a woolly mammoth now we have a a dinosaur this is gonna be great so i think it was probably easy relatively for drake to gain access to the crew and now he's working as a headliner as well for maybe another calamity and that's the reason we don't see him right now it wasn't he wasn't working for jack because we didn't see jack hanging around um very much around x drake and right now, uh, Hold'em and uh, Hawkins, we don't see Drake around very much now. So it's possible that Drake is, like, in a, another sector of Wano, and he's under the command of another Calamity. Now, keep in mind, once again, I'm just assuming that the Calamities are the direct superiors of the Headliners. That might not actually be the case. The Headliners might have their own authority over certain regions, and they could do whatever they want. And the Calamities might just be, like, you know, the three strongest members of the crew right next to Kaido. They Maybe they have authority over them if they really want to but it might not actually be like a chain of command like the gifters report to the headliner the, re the headliners report to the calamities and the calamities report to kaido it might not be set up like that it might just be like there's i don't know 10 headliners and they could do whatever they want and uh, you know the calamities are just kind of like I, I don't want to say the personal guards of kaido because Kaido, Kaido doesn't need guards. The guy is like a tank times 10 with like a nuclear bomb attached to it and a shark. So, you know, Kaido doesn't need guards for anything. Not the least of which, like, his whole purpose is like, I can't get rid of my... I need to just end my existence somehow. So why would he have guards if that's his hobby? So, yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I think the Calamities might just be, like, the strongest members of his crew that he'll send out when there's like a really important task to be done, like trying to locate a road poneglyph or something like that. But otherwise, you know, they, they don't directly take orders. They don't really give out orders. They just kind of do what they want to do. Maybe, maybe the calamities, maybe think of them something like that, or think of them just like what their, um, their titles are, their disasters, their calamities, their sole purpose is just to kind of put the fear of God in the people, you know, like, yeah, uh, Jack, um, the people down in that town there, they're getting a little bit too complacent. Go down there and crush all their crops just to show them who's boss. You got that? Glug, glug, glug. He's like, right, I got that, Kaido. And he goes down and does it. You know, maybe that's what their purpose is. Like, they just attack without warning, without, uh, direction. They just do what they need to do just to kind of put the fear in the populace. That, that would make perfect sense. I mean, it's a Yonko crew, after all. You gotta kind of keep that fear train moving.
And so the last thing I wanted to discuss here is the possibility of there being another group that we just haven't been introduced to yet. So we have the gifters, we have the pleasures, maybe there's another group that's in that's like responsible for something else, maybe responsible for espionage or something, and they're called the Watchers. I, I don't know, I'm just trying to come up with like maybe there's another section that we haven't seen so far. Um, so far with the gifters, most of the devil fruits that they've been given are like combat based, like Batman. Well, Batman has the ability to hear things from a long distance, so you might be thinking he's good at espionage too, but he can also like attack people with the bow and arrow. Uh, we saw like the lobster dude and all the ones that attack Zoe, uh, hold him. You know, he's not a, he's not a gifter, but I guess, well, I guess he is a gifter. He's just part of, he's a headliner as well. So maybe they can like, you know, cross into another section, but there might be another area of the crew that we don't know about yet. Maybe when things are really hitting the fan and the straw hats and, you know, the heart pirates and they're wrecking everything and everything's going to shit. Maybe at that point, Kaido's like, you know, send out the destroyers or, or sends you know send out this other part of my crew that i didn't you know we didn't know about yet so it, think of that possibility as well but uh overall i think it's a pretty basic kind of setup for a crew especially if that whole calamity thing i was talking about it comes to pass if it really is like all ancient zones and they're used as like just natural disasters that wipe out things that that would be a pretty cool concept right and then you get to kaido himself who i actually do not think has a devil fruit i don't think he has an artificial zone or a regular devil fruit i think he's just that freaking freak show strong and um you know he swings that giant like uh that that uh, club around and stuff he's huge i mean um maybe if you're gonna say anything he has some type of oni devil fruit that's usually what people throw out but i like to think he's just a really buff dude he doesn't even need it and the fact that he commands a hundred beasts under his employ some of which are already incredibly strong that just proves how powerful kaido really is and we might get that. We might get that later. Like, like Kaido gets really mad what the Straw Hats are doing, and he might, you know, take one. Like, let's say a Calamity fights against Luffy and the crew. And this fight is ridiculously hard. It's kind of like the fight that the Straw Hats had against the PX4 at Sabaoni. Like, all of the Straw Hats working together barely managed to take the PX4 down. Maybe that would go down. Like, a Calamity comes out. All the Straw Hats work together, try to take down this Calamity. He manages to go back to Kaido... And he's like, man, those guys were really strong. And then Kaido just like, I'm mad at you, and just crushes him with one attack. And then that shows how powerful Kaido is. And that also shows that there's no way the Straw Hats can take out Kaido by themselves. They're going to need a lot of help from the other supernovas and, and Law and his group. And, they're, they're gonna, and maybe the samurai and stuff. They're going to need a lot of help to take down Kaido. But that's, uh, that's another video. So thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, remember, British! Uh, so yeah, have, have a great night. Cheerio! Do you say that? Probably not. I hope that wasn't offensive. Just bye, everybody. Bye. By the way, um, what's a quid? Because that sounds like a variety of seafood. I'm not sure. But if you could tell me, that'd be great. Later!